XRP has managed to close the monthly to the upside with momentum. So the momentum sign does argue that XRP is bullish while the total altcoin market remain red while Ether is in red while Bitcoin is red. So what's happening? Is the monthly show you buyers are pushing into this asset? What should we be looking forward to? Welcome to the Scientific Investor Family, where the normal retail guys get to learn how to become the next top 10% of this world. If you do look at the momentum side, yes, XRP is favored. Those who are looking to enter the momentum side of the equation should be selecting XRP. But we need to look at deeper picture. That's where you go into the monthly chart, altcoin market. And the altcoin market shows you the selling has been higher. The volume, however, does not reflect directly in the price action. You don't see a huge bearish shaped candle to the downside. You look at Bitcoin for that matter, and you kind of see similar idea. There has been a lot of selling but the price did not drop that low. However, when you actually come into the side of Ether, things look different. There was a lot of selling compared to last previous last two weeks, but not substantially higher volume than the top. But then the downside has been bigger. So someone from the inside has been selling this, which means the amount of sellers are exceedingly higher in Ether than XRP, than the total general cap, which is showing you something. Now, when you're in XRP and you're looking at the monthly, zooming into the weekly, yeah, the story still remains the same. The amount of patience which you need is high here. You need to either wait for a breakout for which the odds look very little. Whereas the price coming back down for an ABC type of event is looking like it has higher odds. So your midterm support remains 0.49. There has not been a change in that because the weekly argues you should be coming down. The three day argues that the volume is green, but it failed to push the price back up. So sellers are still active in a short-term chart for XRP. You zoom in all the way and you see, huh, we made a lower high. We are now making a lower low, which usually points you towards, yeah, you may visit the next level of support. So on a short-term scenario, this is what we are looking at in the crypto market. Say you argue, okay, that's XRP. That's a little bit different because it's monthly momentum in itself is different. Then we go on to Bitcoin. We go on a three-day chart for Bitcoin. And you get to see almost similar movements. But the three-day candle which closed argues the perspective that it is not moving anyway. Because the next candle, three-day candle close, is coming after 48 hours. And that kind of shows you the previous candle which closed with a lot of selling volume doesn't end up with a huge bearish candle. So Bitcoin is finding buyers on a micro level while XRP is finding sellers. Now you go look at the daily chart for Bitcoin to see where we should be bottoming because the micro trend line here is broken. Now your macro support should be eyed So your primary is going to be 57 and the next major support is going to be 53,000. You made a local high here, but you failed to breach the swing high. So while you compare it with that, you kind of see the swing highs are becoming lower highs. So if you do break this level, it's going to be a panic. But right now, the market doesn't show that. Because when you do go on a weekly chart for Bitcoin, you're still holding on to this level while 
your RSI is showing you still remain close to 50. Yes, a break below 45 is a red flag, but right now, that's not the time to be worried about that. But yes, a panic in ether for any reason can be a panic in the entire market. But when you do look at ether and ask the question, okay, if there is a panic, what would be the price level onto which ether would be dropping to? So if you are plotting that, you will argue, okay, ether can drop for sure, but the support remains the same. 2100, 2200 is going to be that support zone. Now it's not only this trend line which is acting as a support at that time, it is also the accumulation range, which gives you a certainty that the price action is still bullish. It broke the accumulation zone, coming back to retest it, and most likely it end up into a bounce. Now, if you are a pattern guy, then you're arguing that either it's about to come back down to this range, and we have seen similar price action. We have seen similar patterns before where yes, we come back down to trend lines, whether it's the short term or the long term, and then start the macro bounce. Now, say you don't trust the three day chart. You go on a weekly chart, you would like to look for where the bottoms formed. So last time, it was around 25% below the moving average. I'm using a 21 day moving average. As of now, if you do plot the moving average, the price, you have already seen 34 to the downside. And right now you stand at 24%. That is not a bad thing. You've already met your downside based on the recent history. That's last two years. Now if you go back, you go back into the last cycle. If you want to look at this, that was like a 50% drop. If you want to look at this event, which is 27 April 2020, that was another 50% drop. So historically, we've seen 50% drop from there. But in this cycle, with all the institutions in, the volatility has been dampened. For sure, especially in Ether and Bitcoin, with heavy liquidity, the institutional buyers are playing with that. Now you go to the price action side of the equation. Say you look at ETA and it is showing you there was an inverted hammer formation, which suggests there is a lot of bias entering. In that sense, this previous resistance should hang in here as a support. You make a double bottom and you bounce off. That would be the perfect scenario. So you're waiting for maybe next 10 days to see a bounce off here and a break of 2800. Because our initial point, which we made here, was we'll come up to 2900, we'll get rejected to 2300. We just got that. Fine. Now, what next? A retest here and a bounce off would be the best scenario. Now, say that's just Ether. You go look at the altcoin market as a whole and you're like okay the pattern didn't change the price structure remains the same just it's boring and while the market is boring the trouble is we try to make the best best decision based on the micro volatility because that's the only volatility which you have say for example you go on to a bitcoin daily chart and what do you see you're watching last three four days like this, there is no volatility. The price remains in a range. So if you're trading micro, that's a different story. You're trying to pick the top and bottom, but that's so risky. If you're on a macro, you're like, okay, we have seen something like this before. And each of these times, it goes against the trend. For example, there was a few days back in February and it went against the trend. So if that's true, the micro leg down in which we reach this support is to the downside. So opposite direction means you may come back up to test 63,000, 64,000. Trouble, however, remains that this resistance need to be breached. And uh, right now, if you make a lower high again, 
that is going to be a trouble showing you. We're going to come back down to 53,000. Now, how long is this mess going to take? No one knows. But when you go on a weekly chart, which is a higher time frame, it kind of gives you the argument we're still in a pattern. That pattern didn't break to the downside. You're still on a macro flag where you're trying to break to the upside. The monthly gives you the idea you don't have a negative divergence and you're going to develop that soon. So all of these phase kind of gives you one idea there is going to be a blow off. This time around, however, XRP is starting to show you higher buying impact. While all of them are trending lower on the momentum side of the equation, this guy is finding bias and pushing higher. It is trying to remain above a critical level of support. Now, what critical level of support? This is what you need to understand. We got supported around that 0.55 mark, 0.53 mark back in 2022. Then it turned as a resistance. Right now, it is turning back into a support mode, which is great. However, the recent past shows you the bottom, the support, the strongest support is close to 0.49 towards 0.4. Seven. So that range is a strong support. So the price coming back down to that will be considered as an opportunity by the market makers. They would try to use that to enter or to double down into any assets which they like. Because while the entire market is choppy, you're watching some assets, certain assets showing you they are making bull flags. They're making bullish reversals. And these kinds of bullish divergence end up giving you huge opportunities. And that's what the SI family is being fed with. 1,200 members in the SI family is readily taking benefit of everything being posted there. So if you'd like to take benefit of that, use the link in the description. Be at the right time before the market start to go up. The issue with the retailers, when the price is down and the price is right, no one would like to buy. When the price is bursting through the sky and reaching a huge resistance, everyone would like to buy. Try the opposite. When the price is down, you buy. When the price is up, you sell. This way, you make profit. If you're a long-term holder, you are doing this on a cyclical basis. You buy when the price is 80% down. You wait for the profits to rise wherever you're comfortable with. Maybe here, maybe here, but you close in profit. That's all it matters. So now you come back to the payment scale and you put the chart on a weekly. Ask the same question. Where do you see the price now? Is it at the bottom? Is it at the top? No, we are not. We're close to the bottom. So when you buy low, this is what you are talking about the burst to the upside. If you think you got value from this video, smash that like button for me. And if you'd like to join the party as it starts, join the SI family. Use the link in the description below. I'll meet you guys on next video. Bye for now.